Good morning. My name is Marcia Hutchinson and I'm the project manager at Migrants Union. Migrants Union was set up two years ago to support people affected by Windrush and to record their stories. And I'm delighted that at a meeting just on Wednesday, so just three days ago, um, a decision was made to hold this march in solidarity with those who are being deported. More often than not, they are descendants of the Windrush generation. There is absolutely no need to deport people for speeding offences. Someone has actually been deported and his only crime was speeding. Nobody was hurt, there was no crash. These deportations are racist. These deportations are happening specifically because Boris Johnson wants to associate black people with crime. He wants to throw red meat to the racists. We are not going to let that happen. We are going to stand in solidarity with people. There is no requirement for British citizenship for you to be an angel. The no angel defense of as long as you've never done anything wrong in your life, you can stay here. But you make any mistake, even after you've served your sentence, and we're going to round you up and put you on a plane. And I'm of Jamaican descent, and it is no coincidence that, that people are being sent back to Jamaica. Absolutely no coincidence. It's really important for us all to stand in solidarity with the people who were being deported, with their families. After the last deportation, five of those people have been murdered in Jamaica. It is well known that they are at risk if they are sent back to Jamaica, but that has happened. And the person who has sent them back formerly Theresa May, now Boris Johnson, really doesn't care. It doesn't really matter how many people he throws under the bus. The fact that he himself should be eligible for deportation, having admitted to taking cannabis numerous times and being born in, a, in another country, he should be on the first flight out to the USA to go and hang out with Donald Trump, another criminal. Yes. <laughs> it is absolutely appalling that black people are being used as a fig leaf to cover what is going on in this country. Our, my mother is Windrush generation. She came here, she worked for 30 years, she got her pension, a very small pension at that. And it's interesting that a lot of the Windrush generation are pensioners who are being thrown out just after they've paid 30 years worth of contributions and after they should be entitled to benefits which they are not getting. These are people who didn't use Britain's social services growing up. They came here fully formed, grown and ready to work. They contributed for 30 years plus and this is how we reward them. It's wrong and we will not stand for it. I'm delighted at the number of unions who have put the word out today because a lot of these people were members of unions, paid union dues, and until recently, I'm sad to say their unions didn't stand by them. But I hope that is a thing of the past. I hope the unions are now going to stand by them because this is just the first group they're coming after. After us, who next? You have seen what Joris, Boris Johnson said about Muslim women. You have seen the whole range of racist behaviors that he has engaged in and is deliberately aimed to a section of the electorate to distract them from the people who are really taking their jobs, who are really defunding their community centers, who are really the 1% the, the who are actually taking their money. We did not cause the financial crash. If anything, the Windrush generation have helped to bail this country out. The number of people in my family and people I know generally who have worked in the NHS, who have literally cleaned the bottom of people while they are being racially abused, while they are being told to take your black hands off me. It's like, well, who's going to literally clean your shit if I don't do it? Anyway, I don't want to get too angry. I'm going to introduce our first speaker, who is Anthony Brown of Windrush Defenders. Anthony has done an amazing amount of work. Please give him a round of applause. Anthony Brown. We love our sisters. We're gathered here today 
on a very historic spot, as I was saying earlier to a few. This is St. Peter's Square. And we know that just over 200 years ago, in St. Peter's Field, there was a massacre of working people who were standing up for their rights. Now, it's ironic that, once again, we're here as working people together, standing up for our rights. But what rights? Because we've heard in the media time and time again that these are criminals. And we say to ourselves, and others say, well, what rights should criminals have? They forfeited their rights, so therefore we can do all kinds of cruel and unusual punishment to them. Well, actually, um, that's a crime under international law, cruel and unusual punishment. But that's exactly what the deportation law is. It's arbitrary law. There is no weighing of the circumstances. That's not justice. That's what the Magna Carta was all about. Arbitrary law. The king or the powers that be wanted to just apply laws that suited them whenever and turn on whoever they chose. And yet we're told that these are British values that should be maintained and that should be adhered to. Well, who, who are these people that are going against British values? Now, I was born in Jamaica, a British colony. And as you can see, I don't look like the majority of people who live in England. So why am I here? The reason is Britain committed crimes abroad and that's why I'm here. My ancestors were taken from Africa to Jamaica and made British. We didn't choose that. And for three, four hundred years, that was the case. How can you then, in 1962, pass a law that says we're independent and we're not British anymore after three, four hundred years? We were a part of England long, you know, we were a part of the empire longer than Scotland was. And yet, we're told we're no longer British. There was no referendum. There was no divorce bill. We didn't get a share of the wealth that had been created by Jamaica. Jamaica is just a tiny island in the Caribbean. Why such a fuss about Jamaica? You know, last year there was a plane load of people that were deported to Jamaica. Again, February this year, in the intervening period, I never heard about another plane load of people. Why? As they would say in Jamaica, them tech set upon Jamaica. So you have to go back and look at the history. Now, Oliver Cromwell, who created the Commonwealth of England, sent his ships in 1655 to take his paniola. It failed. And that's when they took Jamaica. And Jamaica became a British possession and created a huge amount of wealth. And with that wealth, the British Empire grew more and more powerful. Then, the, 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 the people in Jamaica were made British. Some of, some of the people were recruited in Jamaica as British soldiers. And they created what was called the West India Regiment. Google it. The West India Regiment was then taken to West Africa and were used to go through the hostile jungles to fight inland to destroy the Ashanti Empire, which was the bulwark that was still trading in, in, in slaves but keeping the Europeans on the coast. And so by using the wealth and the people of Jamaica, they were able to begin colonialism in Africa. So there's been a long history between Britain and Jamaica.
But there are people in Jamaica that fought back. And for 140 years, between 1655 and 1739, we had the Maroons up in the hills, and they held the world power of that time to a standstill until a peace treaty was signed. So I'm saying they've picked on the right people. The Jamaicans are fighters. We will not take this lying down. Right? And we want you to stand with us. Yes? My parents came here. I came here. They wanted to deport me in 1983. But we rallied together and people stood with me then. And that deportation order was lifted. So I know what those people on those planes feel. And, you know, we are put in situations where it's risky that we can commit crimes. I could have committed a crime and been deported over the last 30 years because I had indefinite leave to remain. But through the Winrus scandal and the Winrus scheme, I have now got back my British citizenship. So how does that work? All that, those changes that I've had in terms of identity and nationality, and yet I'm still the same person. So it's just people in power making up these rules to divide and rule. So if we stand together, we can defeat them. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Passionate and powerful. We're now going to ask Ian Allenson to speak, the president of Manchester Trades Union Council, and one of the people who have helped get this event off the ground by publicizing it to their members. Thank you, Ian. Five. There are three points I really wanted to make. The first is that Marcia's right to talk about the chequered history of the trade union movement when it comes to opposing racism. Unfortunately, at the same time as unions have often been really important for challenging the power structures that cause discrimination and are behind racism, challenging employers and landlords in the state, there's also times when unions have been part of those power structures as well. And it's taken struggle to try and fight to make sure unions are on the right side of, the, side of those battles. Whether we think about the, the boycott of Bristol buses, where unions were complicit in keeping black and Asian workers out of, out of jobs. And that struggle, of course, continues. We still don't always get it right. So it's a great privilege to be here and to have the support of so many unions in backing the demonstration today because we now face a Tory government that is racist, that is union busting and that's out to get us all and the only thing that's going to work against them is solidarity and solidarity of course is what trade unions should be all about, about standing together, about saying when an injury to one is an injury to all and if one person is on a plane being deported that's one too many and we should fight to stop that. Of course, there are still debates going on inside the unions about our attitude to all these questions. And these are only going to become more important. And one of the reasons they're going to become more important is because, and we see the terrible weather today, far more extreme weather events. We're seeing big parts of the world becoming uninhabitable with the impacts of climate change. We're going to see millions of people fleeing for their lives. And what we can't afford to have is have governments in office who draw lines based on which bit of dirt we were born on as to what rights we have and whether we have the right to a roof over our house and to live with our family and to have a job. We have to stand together against racism and for the internationalism that's been the Labour movement at its best. Now we have Akila Akinola from Trafford, wonderful local councillor. Give her a round of applause as she comes up to the stage. Akila. Thank you, Marcia. Uh, I'm not very accustomed to speaking in public, so um, my apologies now. Um, I'm a Manc born and bred. I've been in this, lived here for 53 years. I'm used to this weather. But my dad came over from Jamaica in 1961. And I look at all the things that have been going on, and I'm not an expert. I'm not someone who knows all the facts and figures like some of the speakers who've been on today. All I know is that this is affecting lots of people. I know that there's people out there who are afraid of coming forward and talking about their status because they're not sure what it is. My dad came here in 1961, a British citizen. As far as he was concerned, he was British, end of. He came here to work 
and to better his life and chances for his children. For his 70th birthday, we bought him a trip to go back to Jamaica. Only his second trip since he came back to the UK. It took me eight weeks to get him back home from Jamaica because he didn't have, although he should have had, because it seemed he did have, right to remain. And it took us eight weeks to get him back. And since he's come back, we're fortunate that he's been able to have medical treatment. He's not been like some people that we know of who've been denied medical treatment, who've been denied access to benefits and housing benefits, who've had to give up their jobs because they can't prove their citizenship. I'm fortunate in that I've always, I've had enough money to go on holiday, so I've had a passport. I dread to think that if I hadn't had money when I was 18 to get a passport, if I was trying to get a passport now, what would happen? I'm a councillor in Trafford, the first black woman councillor. I've lived in Trafford for 27 years. Trafford has had a black community there for well over 40 years. Yeah, I'm the first one. How ridiculous is that? So this has made me feel sick what's happened this week with the deportations. So sick that I had to write to the Trafford Council to say, get a statement out. We can't be support, seem to be supporting this. I wrote to Andy Burnham to say, what are the figures? What are the numbers for Greater Manchester? Do you actually know? I'm still waiting for a response from him, by the way. But do you know what? I might have the surname Akinola but I'm a Jamaican, a Manc and a Jamaican. I'm proud of my background. My Irish mother, my Jamaican father. I changed my name to Akinola and my husband did as well because I no longer wanted to have a slave name because the name that my father was given would have been the name that the owners had and gave him. So I decided into, I didn't want that anymore. And in the same way I decided I don't want to be identified with slavery, I don't want to be identified with this corrupt, disgusting government that is racist. There's no ifs, no buts, no maybes. And they're starting with us because we're the darker skinned, but you just watch anybody else who doesn't agree with them and isn't good for them, they will get rid of. So I'm sorry if I feel like I'm preaching, but you know what, I'm, God's not to swear, I'm really, really not happy about this. And people have got to do something, so, which is one of the reasons I became a counselor, because there isn't enough people from working class backgrounds, and particularly people of color who've got into politics. We all need to be there. We've all got a voice. We don't have to be experts. Look at what we've got already. We haven't got frigging experts. We've got people who've got money behind them who don't know what it's like to live a day-to-day -day life. So people, if nothing else, get involved, turn up for rallies, be there and be in solidarity and support all our brothers and sisters. Thank you. Our next speaker is Rena Wood. She's the interim regional convener for Unison in the Northwest. Welcome to Manchester. This great city. Thank you to the organisers for giving Unison the opportunity to declare to declare our solidarity. And I think it's important to acknowledge the history of the trade union movement, my union, and the wider labour movement. Campaigns that started in Manchester, the Anwar Dita campaign, the Virat Mendes campaign, my own trade union, the Francis Sokolami campaign the Wives and Divided Families campaign. So this is not a new issue for us. And the principal policy of this government is not a new issue either. It is about divide and rule. It is about race and class. And we have to continue to fight together to educate our brothers and sisters who don't understand the politics of hate, because that is what this is about. Immigration legislation is legislation that labels black people as a problem whose numbers have to be controlled. That's what immigration is about. And we're clear about that. And we need to tell our brothers and sisters in this struggle why it's their issue and why it's a trade union issue. And also, if you look at all the facts, custodial sentences that black people, especially young black men, are given are far higher and greater than their white counterparts. So they serve their time, the higher time, and they're slammed with double jeopardy. It is not acceptable. And we say to this Tory government, 
No more Black Lives Matter. We will fight you to the end. We will defend our brothers and sisters because what you're doing will not stop us in our struggle for justice, for social justice in an equitable way. Power to the people. Thank you. Uh, we invited the local MPs. It was short notice, so they weren't all able to come. But Lucy Powell, who is the MP for Manchester Central, sent this statement, which she's asked me to read. I will do my best in the rain. So, Lucy Powell's statement. I'd like to thank everyone who has come out to the demonstration today and apologize for not being able to stand here with you. As you may know, I have one of the largest Windrush communities in the country in my constituency and I have been raising the issue of deportation of Windrush descendants for years. Last year, some of you may remember that my constituent, Owen Hazley, who has lived in the UK since he was four years old, was nearly deported. I was horrified when I found out that two more of my constituents were scheduled to be on this week's charter flight. At the heart of these deportations is a deep misunderstanding from the government that most of these individuals are British citizens and always have been. Many of those scheduled to be on the flight have lived in the UK since they were children. Many are descendants of the Windrush generation and many were imprisoned for non-violent crimes. The government cannot continue holding the Windrush generation and their descendants to a higher standard than other citizens. They have always been British citizens, whether they are good citizens or not, whether they commit a crime or not, that is our problem. We are responsible for their reform, rehabilitation and restitution. Thank you, Lucy. I'd now like to call Evan Pritchard, Chair of Unite Community Manchester. Thank you so much, Evan. Five minutes. Right. Okay, yeah. Uh, greetings everyone. Uh, I'd like to say, when I look at this weather, one day when I can afford it, I'd actually like to go to Jamaica. But I certainly wouldn't want to go shackled because somebody has looked at my past, at my criminal record, and I'm not going to go into that now, and, and, and decided that because of something I did many, many years ago, that although I was born in this country, that I've got to go to a country that I don't know and, I, and which I've got no choice. I can't, I can't imagine, I can't imagine what goes through the minds of people who think that, there's, that, that, is, that there's anything okay about that. What I would like to do is read out something that uh, the uh, Black and Ethnic Minority Equalities uh, national officer of my union said at the time that the Windrush scandal uh, first uh, first broke uh, he said it's disgraceful that people have been living in this country for decades who worked hard paid taxes and contributed to our society in more ways than one have had to undergo uh, uh, such cruel treatment not only have they faced the prospect of being deported to a country they do not know, but in many instances have been denied access to bank accounts, to accommodation, to health care, to employment, and have been hang on, I can't read, uh, out, locked out of social security and justice systems altogether. Some have even been literally locked up in detention centres. This is about dignity and respect. Unite calls on the government to restore every right that has been stripped from our fellow citizens to end the deportations and even beyond this to give full compensation for the hurt, humiliation and loss of income and housing they've had to endure. This scandal shows that the government has got it totally wrong with its immigration policies and its approach to race relations. In the 70 years after Windrush, we've still got a long way to go before BAEM communities achieve true equality. Yeah, one, one, one point I'll say as well about Anthony, right? People like Anthony Brown right, have been working hard, unpaid, to support the legal rights of people affected by the joint window scandal generally and about what's going on at the moment. Unpaid. And the reason for that, and this is something that Unite has highlighted, and it's not just about immigration law, it's about benefits as well, and that's something I know a lot about because I help people out who've got benefits problems, again, unpaid. 
There is no legal aid. They took away legal aid from, uh, from, from nearly all immigration law. They took away, like they did from benefits and like other, many other issues of law. Right? And that is one thing that Unite has had a lot to say about, and it's what a lot of other people have had a lot to say about, and it's something we really do have to push. How can it be right, how can it be fair that people who are affected directly, their human rights are affected directly by government policies, that they do not have the same right as the government to use the law to defend themselves? It's absolutely outrageous and it's one of many th not one of many reasons why it was a terrible terrible tragedy that the general election went the way it did but let's not mourn about that as the old saying goes don't mourn organize thank you thank you so much evan i can't say how pleased i am that the major unions are not only here today but have put information out to their members before we invite the next speaker can i just remind you Take pictures, tweet to the hashtag Stop the Deportations. We've drafted a motion. If you're a member of a political party or a union, get that motion through your unions. Eventually, we want this to be made law. We want to repeal the hostile environment legislation. It doesn't just affect black people, it affects all of you, but we are, we are the poster children for this. Our next speaker is Nahela Ashraf from Stand Up to Racism. Everyone knows her in Manchester, a really passionate speaker and organiser. Naila. Hello. And can I say by saying how great it is that we're all out here today and thank people for coming out, but let's be quite clear. It's really important we're here today because actually we have to stand with our brothers and sisters in the Windrush generation. So, but I want to give my solidarity from a national organisation because there are demonstrations like this happening up and down the country. This looks small, but let's be very clear, we are part of a national mobilization. People up and down this country are absolutely disgusted that people in our community, our brothers and sisters, let's be very clear on this, they are our brothers and sisters who are being held in detention indefinitely and then being deported for no reason whatsoever. In fact, the crimes that these people are supposedly committed are crimes far less serious than some of our own ministers. But it's all right for them because they're white middle class men with a lot of money in the bank. So let's be very clear, this government is racist. They are not making mistakes by deporting these people. They have not misunderstood the legislation. They have created the windrus, the, uh, they have created this hostile environment. When Theresa May was the Home Office Minister and she was the first person to set up this legislation, she said it wasn't hostile enough. And isn't it shocking actually, I, even after that, when we found out what they were doing to our brothers and sisters in the windrus generation, the Home Office apologised. In fact, the minister at the time resigned. And yet, what are they doing? They're now continuing to deport people. And it's not acceptable. We know that this government, and it's important because as a Muslim woman, you see, I know what this feels like. I, I recognise the fear that this has created within the black community, with the Afro-Caribbean community, because you know what? As Muslim women, we know we had that shocking incident where we had that supposed jihadi wife who was told that she couldn't come back to Britain. A woman, a young girl who had been groomed while she was at school, let's be very clear, she had been groomed online, she was a victim of ISIS, but her, her, uh, her right to British citizenship was removed, and then what they did, they allowed her child, her baby, her newborn baby to die in that refugee camp because she, they told us that she, they weren't safe, that it wasn't safe to bring that baby back because somehow we wouldn't be safe from this, that, that, that baby. But let's be quite honest, all of us here today, we know the people that we are not safe from is this Tory government, this racist Tory government that is kick, ticking off people that they don't like, people who want to stand together shoulder to shoulder. And they talk about, let me say this, they talk about British values. Well, I'll tell you this, their British values are not the same British values that we here today who stand together and share. If anyone needs to go, it's a Tory government and Boris Johnson and, that, and his ilk. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Councillor Rabnawaz Attar. Where has he gone? Thank you, Marcia, and thank you for everybody who's turned up uh, this morning. I wear uh, a number of hats. I'm co-chair of Stand Up To Racism. I'm a member of Unite the Union, and I'm executive member uh, in the City Council responsible for equalities in the city. And let's get this straight. This is about blatant inequality, nothing else. In terms of those who say it's about offenders, well, let's also get this straight. The criminal justice system in this country is about, yes, it's about punishment, but proportional punishment with rehabilitation. It's about 
punishment after being convicted that goes side by side with correction. How can it be that people who've committed something as minor as speeding offences are sent back without any due process, no concern for their safety, to somewhere where they've never been there for years and years? That is not absolutely wrong. That just cannot allow, be allowed to happen. And it's about standing together. Because let's be honest, Boris Johnson is going to pick one by one. This is about the politics of division. And if it's one community today, it's another tomorrow. So we've got to stand together with people from the black community because what the hostile environment is, it does not recognize the significant communities, the contribution of the black communities from Jamaica, from the Caribbean, who've helped make this country what it is. So solidarity with our brothers and sisters, and we're going to fight this until they change this legislation and the end of this hostile environment. Thank you. I'd like to invite our next speaker, Akua Beunu, on behalf of Grassroots Black Left. Thank you, Akua. Thank you. Uh, I'm really happy and proud to be here representing Grassroots Black Left in solidarity with all of you and with the families and the people who have been involved in these deportations, these illegal, cruel, evil deportations. Grassroots Black Left, I'll explain who we are. We're about the bringing together of people of African heritage and people of Asian heritage together under one banner as black. We are black people who understand that we are at the receiving end of the most hostile of this environment and we need to work together. So echoing the words of Rabdouaz, coming together to, to shape change, we are here just to express our solidarity with all of you. Grassroots Black Left, thank you. Somebody just spoke to me and uh, I was, had to drag myself away, but that person said that they really, really object to the term BAME because it points us out as minorities when in fact we are a global majority. Maybe not in the UK, but in the world we are a global majority and it's important to recognize that. So thank you, sister. Often language changes and it's difficult and it's hard to say things without offending people. I don't mean to offend, I mean to try and bring us together and to support each other in solidarity. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Um, really like to thank everybody who spoke already. So I'm, yes, I'm a Hume councillor and I am of a Nigerian background. So my grandfather's Nigerian. My gran is Irish, so I'm from a family of immigrants. My grandchildren, their grandparents are Jamaican. So within the Moss Side and Hume community, it's been very, very difficult to not see the hate crime that has been put upon them by the government and to see the torture and the injustice done within the communities. I recently, over the last two years, took part in a joint enterprise case which seen 13 young people from the Moss Side, Ardwick and Rushon community be charged with joint enterprise murder. There was 11 convictions with the ages starting from 14 up to 30. The 30-year-old, their case was thrown out eventually, but the others are now serving lifetime sentences. Within those young people, they have been told that they will be deported, who were born in Jamaica and came here when they were one years of age. They are, only, they are in prison for a crime that they didn't commit, but through John's enterprise, they were convicted. And my concerns are, we've got so many black young men in the justice system, are they all gonna be deported? Are they all gonna be treated like this? This is a hate crime, this is unjust, and those families are also the victims. So these children could be looking, and I say children because they are, could be looking at 30 years, the sentences, serving a minimum of 23, 20, and 19 years, and then being told you will be deported. And also told there's nothing they can do at the moment. There's no help, there's no support. So when we look at deportation, you've got to think it's not just, we need to look at what's in place now. It has to stop now and we need to stand up. We need to go to grassroots levels in wards and communities, into schools, colleges, universities, and get our people out there fighting and fighting for justice for the rest of Manchester and the rest of the country. This has been a great day for us. We're out here in the wet and cold, the normal Manchester weather. But thank you everybody for coming out. And thank you for letting me speak, Marcia. Thank you. And the, the one thing I want to say is, as I look out in this crowd, I think I see more white faces than black. And that's a good thing. We need allies. 
We cannot do this by ourselves. We need Unison. We need Unite. We need the CWU. We need all of you. We've had meetings in Manchester Labour Women's Forum where some of the white women have said, I don't know what to do. And that's good to honestly say, I do not know what to do. The next step is, this is how you can be an ally. This is how you can support us. This should be the makeup of marches supporting the Windrush generation. It's really important that we stand up for each other because eventually, as one of the previous speakers has said, they will pick us off group by group by group. As Annette just said, joint enterprise is the most pernicious thing you've ever seen. One person stabbed somebody. 12 people were convicted for murder, not because they did anything, not because they were even there, but because they knew the killer. They didn't know the killer had a knife. They just happened to be in the general vicinity. In some cases, they are Facebook friends. They made a funny gang sign on Facebook. That is enough to be convicted of murder. And once you've been convicted, you're going to be deported at the end of your sentence. Black people get longer sentences, so if you've got a sentence of more than 12 months, that's it, you're going to be deported at the end of that sentence. It is a deliberate system to victimize a group, to turn that group into scapegoats, and then to really kick them as scapegoats, and to say to the rest of the population, it's all right, these are the bad ones, and we've got rid of them, you're fine now. The Windrush generation didn't take people's jobs. The Windrush generation helped prop up the British economy. There would not have been an NHS without the Windrush generation. You can't set up an NHS in seven years flat. Where are you going to get the doctors? Where are you going to get the nurses? We came here to help rebuild this country after the war, and this is how we are rewarded. The hostile environment means you can't have a bank account, you can't access health service, you can't even get a driver's license, you can't keep your job, you can't, you can't do anything. It's an internal border system. And if, if it wasn't, if that wasn't bad enough, their children are now being deported. I don't know if many of you know of Sharon Buckner. She was refused a, a visa to come here to her son's funeral. She's Jamaican. She is blind and she's a wheelchair user. And the Home Office said, no, you can't come here to your own son's funeral because you might abscond. How is she going to abscond? She approached some of us, I talked to everyone I knew, and eventually at the 11th hour, she got a visa and she got here, but all her family were already here. You think that story has a happy ending? No, it doesn't. She died three days after she got to England. She got to her son's funeral, but literally, the hostile environment killed her. I went to her funeral in October. For us, this is a matter of life and death. It's really important that you stand up and you stand in support of this community. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for coming out on a Saturday morning. I thank you for taking pictures. I thank you for tweeting. I thank you for putting motions forward to your union, to your branch. I'll be hanging around for a while. I have cards if you want to talk to me, if you want to try and link up. We will do that. And I know this might sound odd at the end of a march, but can you please give yourselves a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you are doing.